Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here. And a couple days ago, I did a video announcing my two week challenge using a MacBook for the first time. Now, I have always used Windows throughout my life, so it gives me kind of a different perspective while using a Mac for the first time. Now, you see I've got it behind me all hooked up, set up with my other monitor, but I kinda wanna talk about my experience with it after about 48 hours with it, and also kind of discuss the transition going from Windows to Mac, and kind of how there is a bit of a learning curve. Now, after using this Mac, I can really see how brand loyalty arises just because of how frustrating it can be to actually learn a new OS. I've been so entrenched in the Windows OS that even learning basic tasks such as putting your computer to sleep or copy paste or screenshot on your MacBook takes time to actually research and learn. Whereas if you have something you already know, why take the time to learn something new? Now with that being said, this will be the first video I edit on my MacBook itself and then every video from here on out through the challenge, I will be editing with Final Cut Pro on the MacBook. So let's go ahead and get started. I wanna talk about a couple days with the MacBook so far. To begin, I do wanna thank you guys for your comments on my previous video. All the tips, all the suggestions that you guys gave are coming in handy and helping out a lot. So with that being said, I got a good number of comments talking about when I opened up the laptop, I didn't need to use two hands. And that's actually the case. I don't need to use two hands to actually open up the lid on the laptop, as you can see. And I also got a lot of questions about this wrap. This is actually a slick wrap, the marble version, and I will link to them down below if you're interested. I'm also a little confused about the App Store on Mac, essentially because of the lack of ratings. You'll see Final Cut Pro only 57 ratings, GarageBand 37 ratings, even something like Twitter 59 ratings. Is there a specific reason for this or are people just downloading apps from different spots? And if so, where do people generally go to get their Mac apps? Let me know if there's any suggested ones as well you'd like me to download and install. That's kind of a big one I'd, uh, I'd actually really appreciate from you guys if there's anything to make my Mac experience a little bit better. And speaking of applications, I do have a little application bar right down here. And I noticed that when my MacBook is not plugged into my monitor, this animation is very choppy. It's not smooth at all. However, when I plug it into my monitor, it is extremely smooth. So very interesting. Um, seems like most animations are very smooth. Maybe for example, this one, I'm using a touchpad um, gesture, but you'll see how smooth it is. It, it's responding to my touch. It's very smooth. But in terms of that app drawer opening, it's kind of a little choppy. Now something also interesting that will be a very big personal preference is that the MacBook does not have a touch screen. I was actually pretty surprised that they did not include any touch screen on this device. Now, that being said, they have included a lot of pretty neat uh, touchpad gestures. To begin, I've noticed the trackpad is actually very large. I don't necessarily know if I need it to be this large. However, some of the gestures require all five of your fingers, including the one to get to your launch pad, which requires four fingers and your thumb to pinch in, or you can get back to your desktop pinching out. Now, with that being said, it's pretty standard point and click. Uh, with your one finger, two fingers is your essentially your right click when you uh, press both of them now. Uh, there is also a force click, a force touch feature. So I haven't used this very much yet, more to come on this in the future, but let's say you have something you wanna search. You'll see this base, so I force touched on it. So I pressed a little bit harder, and you'll see dictionary, thesaurus, you can go over to Wikipedia, you can go to TV show, iTunes store as well. Uh, so you'll see that's actually a really cool feature and I'm going to start using it more. I just haven't really had time with it enough yet to actually test it out. Now, another great feature is with two fingers, you double tap and it zooms in and double tap again. Oops. And it zooms right out. So it's a very nice, quick, easy gesture to zoom in and out. Now, of course, you can also pinch in and out which is another quick feature that you can use. I'm sorry, I was wrong. Launchpad is three fingers in your thumb, not necessarily four. So you need to use four of your fingers right here. But now another couple other ones I wanna make note of is two fingers from the right side it opens up those widgets and also your notifications on the right. And same thing, you can swipe them away just quickly swiping over to the right. And now let's go ahead and zoom in. You'll actually see all of your trackpad gestures and there's a lot of them. And I wanna make note of how many there are just because it's a learning process. It's going to take me a bit of time to remember all of these and remember I can do them. And I'm gonna go ahead and have to actively attempt to uh, remember all of these, whether I wanna to go to Mission Control, swipe up with three fingers, where you can also have multiple desktops. And I do wanna talk about that. It's a really great feature. You can have multiple desktops where I swipe up with three fingers, it's Mission Control, and I can quickly swap between desktops. I can add a bunch of them. So you'll see if I add one here, Add another one. I have a bunch of desktops going real easy and I can just swipe up with three fingers to get back to here. And they also have this dashboard option where it has 
some various widgets for you. Now let's go ahead and go back to this one desktop. And now to actually close out of them, you can just double uh, or right click, I should say, which is two fingers click. And you can, or you can just kind of hover over them and press that X. Now there's very minor things about the Mac OS that make it different than Windows. And it's just kind of a learning curve. For example, even just closing out of an app is in the upper left hand corner. They rearranged the buttons to go into full screen mode or minimize as well. It's just a little bit different to remember that. And of course, it's important to remember that top bar. When you're in an app, if you wanna go into the app settings, they all are up at the top bar. If you wanna to go to Safari preferences, if you wanna to go to a new window, anything like that, when you are in a specific app, you just go to that top bar, you'll see I opened up the calculator there's those calculator settings and if I go to file they change based on the specific app that you're in so this is always changing um, and then also this Apple icon that's very important to remember whether you want to go to system preferences you have recent items force quit and here is actually where you shut down restart and sleep it took me a little bit of time to actually find these three things believe it or not but that's just because I'm not familiar with it and of course with the new MacBook you have the touch bar right here now I want to talk about some of the ones that I have used so far and a lot of them are settings right here so for one you can kind of set your keyboard brightness backlight which I kind of only have to set and that's really about it now volume and also brightness as well someone actually recommended this and like I said I'm taking these to heart and I really do appreciate all these uh, little tips that you guys give me you can actually just press down on the volume and then swipe from the right or the left to actually change your volume and also that's the same with brightness exact same thing press and hold you could turn it up you can turn it down on command just with doing that now of course there is a way where you can just tap it and then use the slider bar or kind of tap up and tap down as well but i find it easiest to just press and hold so thanks for that suggestion siri button i haven't used a lot yet i haven't really tested siri very often it is nice to have a fingerprint scanner over here however there's actually times when I will go to sign in and it doesn't actually allow me to use this. I have to type in my password and I still can't figure out why. I find that it functions well with Safari in terms of switching between tabs. You have searches, you can add new tabs as well. And I also kind of want to make a note that when you're watching a video, let me pull up a YouTube video right here. You can actually quickly switch and scan between that video as well, which is kind of a neat feature. And I have used this a decent amount as well while I watch video. Overall, I'm not exactly sure how much I will generally use the touch bar. I'm gonna need some more hands-on time with it. Uh, however, with that being said, it seems to work as it should very well. And then in terms of just kind of functionality and touch responsiveness, it's very responsive. So you'll see it's uh, it, it responds very well to my touch. I really haven't used any emojis yet in this emoji bar. I think this is kind of just for show, but there are some good functionality features so far. Now, one of the last things I wanna talk about is the keyboard and the keyboard shortcuts. I was a little worried they'd be different, but they really aren't. This command button right here actually acts as very similarly to a control button, such as command A is select all, or you can go ahead and if I have something selected, I can hit command C and then go ahead and hit Command V and it's gonna paste and Command X is cut and then Command V is paste again. So you'll see it's very simple to use and it isn't that big of a transition. There are definitely keyboard commands that I don't know yet, such as the screenshot one. I believe it's Shift Command 3 or Shift Command 4, both, just kind of depending on what type of screenshot you wanna take. So you'll see Shift Command 3 just took this screenshot over here and it bumped on over. So here's a look at that screenshot that I just took. Uh, but with that being said, I am pleased that they have kind of stuck with just getting used to using command over control, uh, CV, cut, copy, paste, all of those good ones. And another quick shortcut that was recommended to me is the command spacebar shortcut to get the spotlight search. Now I could click on this search bar up at the top right, but I find it easier to just hit command spacebar where you can search for apps, you can search for files as well. So if I type in screenshot, it's gonna go ahead and find all of these images, these screenshot images in my email. You see, here's the one I just took. And it's very, uh, very uh, well organized in terms of images, mail and messages. Now it goes to definition and just other various things. Maybe if I wanna type rest, a runt. And if I type that in, you'll see maps comes up with some options around me where I live. Now, with that being said, also suggested websites, events and reminders. So Spotlight Search seems to be a good addition to the OS. Now, with that being said, there's so many more things that I have to learn and I'm still diving into the operating system. So that's everything I wanna talk about for now after using the MacBook Pro for 48 hours. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, lots more to come. I'm gonna talk about very specific features, more about my experience transitioning from Windows to Mac as well. So stay tuned, click that subscribe button. And of course, all of this is going to culminate into the end of the two week challenge where I do my full review on the MacBook. So stay tuned for that as well. As always guys, thanks for all your tips, suggestions. I really do appreciate it and thanks for watching.